Okay, we're inside the weather port now, and this is the uh, area that we've chosen to work on this year, an extension of our last two years of working on Block 6. Uh, we started with our experiential learning program with middle school and high school kids in the spring. Uh, those kids were uh, uh, well supervised, but they helped us in removing the topsoil and, and locating the artifacts from most of these units that have been exposed. Everything is laid out in the grid system that we've tied to since I started in 1988, and uh, we work in two meters squares. Uh, this area here is well within the prison hospital itself, and as we've excavated down, uh, we've actually been able to locate a couple of post holes that represent the center posts for uh, the building. You've got one location here and one location here. What we find is, is that the uh, a post hole was dug so that they could put the support post in. Then as the post sat in the ground, it actually compressed the soil underneath it. And so you have this small, about a seven inch uh, square that is compressed down into the subsoil. And uh, we should be able to come and take a close up of one of these to show what that represents. So these are the actual center posts for the building. It was a two story wooden structure and it was 15 feet in either direction. So it was 30 feet wide. Our tent here is only 30 feet wide, so we can get part of uh, the end on the uh, east side, but the west side, we're a little bit too short for that. Okay, what we're looking at here is one of the center post holes for block number six. And you can see on the outside of this is where we started, and this is how the hole originally uh, was designed, how large it was, and then we cut down into it. Um, and expose further and further amounts of the post hole itself. As you get deeper, it gets a little thinner. And at this point here, what's happened is, this is where the post itself is actually sitting on the subsoil, and it's compressed the soil underneath it, and it leaves that dark stain. When they tore the building down, the post was removed, and then these bits of uh, uh, mortar, which are from the brick chimney that was with this building, have kind of fallen into where the post originally was but the uh, square, the original square of the post itself remains. And this is how we can document exactly where uh, block number six uh, stood. What we have going here are uh, the excavations taking place within one of our two meter squares. And we excavated two meter squares uh, to keep track of the horizontal location of the artifacts that are contained within the uh, block. Uh, we don't uh, dig in smaller units than that because we, we feel because it's been plowed that there's been some disturbance and it's not really worth our time to try to create units that are smaller than that. Uh, these guys have to be very careful to make sure that they keep the floor of this level so that when we get down to the subsoil, which is only about 22 or 23 centimeters down from the surface, uh, it's a nice level um, view of, of the subsoil so we can see any intrusions in the ground and that's where we start to locate um, things uh, like post holes and, and tunnels uh, that may have existed. Uh, inside this soil uh, are the artifacts that were representative of um, uh, what the prisoners uh, had to work with within the, prison, uh, within the prison hospital itself. And when we go out and screen, we'll be able to see some of those artifacts maybe uh, that are coming out of the ground here that they're working on today. What we've done is taken the dirt from the two meter units that we've excavated and we bring it out to the screens in order to make sure we locate uh, all the artifacts that are contained within the soils. And we typically um, uh, wait till we get out here to identify most things unless it's, it shows up as we're blatant. Um, here Dave, let me see what you got there. Um, we've got, uh, for instance, a piece of window glass, which is fairly common to find. Uh, the hospital had lots of windows in it. A um, piece of uh, what looks like a, a patent medicine bottle. It's got a slight paneling to it, meaning that it was a, a squarish bottle, not a round uh, curved bottle. And the green glass is an indication that it's uh, a fairly cheaply made bottle. So it's probably not one of the real nice medicine bottles, but a, maybe just a patent medicine bottle. And then we find um, a lot of times evidence of other land use here prior to the Civil War and uh, we find flint from Native Americans that were here for thousands of years. This particular piece of flint is uh, heat treated so it's uh, 
certainly one that the Native Americans were using and trying to improve its ability to be uh, mapped or, or flaked into a, a projectile point of some sort. And you never know what you're going to find uh, in the screens. Um, <clears throat> you find evidence of uh, uh, bone. Uh, sometimes we'll find um, animal bone, pig bone or cow bone, stuff like that. Uh, nails oftentimes are found. Uh, you've got a little few pieces of brick here that are indication of uh, the chimneys that were in the hospital. One of the debates we're having is exactly how many chimneys the hospital had. We have pictures of it having two or three, and so we're hoping archaeologically we can sort of get an indication through the concentrations of brick of exactly how many were actually here. When they get done screening uh, the soils, um, they make sure they've uh, you know, crushed every little dirt clod down so that nothing remains, and then they'll eventually um, uh, dump, the, dump it out.